What's up and welcome to another Bills Report. You know what time it is, baby. Week two is here. And uh, it's finally time to bring it on back to the 716. <sighs> and yes, got the Raiders coming to town, man. One o'clock kickoff. I'm excited about it because the thing is this, man. The Raiders are a good team and I think a good team coming in is actually what we need, man. Just to ultimately get us to continue to be where we're supposed to be, man, which is locked in, right? So y'all hit that like button on the front end of this thing. And don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so just yet, all right? But um, in terms of why I like this matchup, right? Raiders are good. Watching them last week, man, they played against the Broncos one right at the end of the game. A um, couple of things about them, though. With uh, the quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, good decision maker, not a world beater, but he keeps them on schedule. Um, I thought um, in their last game, man, he made some really good throws, really good decisions. And ultimately, man, was a big part of why they were winning because the running game last week was not as prevalent as it typically is for the Raiders. Because we know Josh Jacobs, a premier back in this league, really good dude, man, um, in terms of just keeping them on schedule. But yeah, last week he was not as uh productive you know so they really had to lean on jimmy and that defense but like i said man with jimmy man really good decision making um and just like i said man a pro's pro this dude has had a lot of success he's been around the league uh and yeah he protects the football so like i said it starts with him in terms of just keeping that offense on schedule then from there man we got to talk josh jacobs dynamic running back man can run inside can run outside has home run ability led the league in rushing a year ago really good player right really good player but as a whole man like i said last week i think he had about 40 yards rushing just wasn't a productive day for him right but then from there when you look at the receivers Devonte adams we know Devonte. Devonte is all world he is a problem still the beauty is this last week jacoby myers really stepped up for them and put that broncos defense in a little bit of a bind because of his production very similar to what we have here with stefan and ultimately uh gabe right but for them jacoby is in the protocol man he has not practiced uh multiple days this week so it's not looking good for him getting cleared if he is not available it does you know make it a lot I don't want to say easy because, like I said, Devontae Adams is still a problem, but it does take a little bit of stress off of that situation because now you're not dealing with two guys, you know, that can carve up a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one segment right there. So I do like that. But the beauty is each and every week, you know, it's less about them and it's more about us. And what do I mean by that is this, man. For us to do what we need to do, for the Bills to take care of business, man, number one, we know we got to protect the ball. Last week, the turnovers weren't related to their defense being elite. Well, I'll, I'll say the third one, the uh, interception, right? Josh's final pick. That one, I will say, I thought that was a good play by the DB, just going up, being aggressive and going and taking it, right? But still, the decision making wasn't the best, was not ideal. That has nothing to do with their defense. That has everything to do with Josh. Josh just has to make sure that he's patient, man. It takes what the defense gives him, picks and chooses when to be aggressive, but understanding that fine line of aggressive and reckless. We don't want reckless. We like aggressive, though, because of how talented he is. But um, I do think, like I said, that's going to be important, but you got to caution it because you go back and watch that tape, man, last week from uh, that game versus the Jets. We got to get that protection to be a little bit more consistent, right? Um, especially when we're talking, you know, the right tackle spot. We know this is something that we've been, you know, pretty much aware of. So it's nothing new. It's not going to go away anytime soon. But that's one of those things, man, that he's got a little bit of a matchup in terms of Spencer Brown, man. Um, and that had Max, Max Crosby coming into town, man. That dude's still doing it at a very, very high level. So, yeah, man, we're going to have to figure out some ways, man, to ultimately protect Josh from Crosby. Because I don't feel like, man, this is a scenario where you want to leave Spencer over there one-on-one -on -one with Max for four quarters. I just think that's a recipe for uh, disaster. So with that being the case, man, um, in terms of Ken Dorsey, man, the OC, we're going to need you to cook it up, man. In terms of just using those tight ends, man, keeping them in that C-gap area, ultimately, man, to just either make Max have to go out a little bit wider than he's want to, or he's going to have to, you know, rush out of a tighter alignment than he wants to. But I need to see a lot of that type of stuff to just ultimately make him very uncomfortable and just give Josh some time. Because if Josh has time, 
Jazz can have a lot of success against this defense, man. I think they're secondary. They have some cool players over there. Um, but as a whole, I feel like that is part of their weaknesses, man. Um, when you start watching them in coverage, they're going to run that Tampa 2. And they got my dude, Robert Splain, over there, man, coming from the Steelers. He runs the Tampa 2 really well. But ultimately, that is, you know, their best cover linebacker right now. And that's a matchup that we're going to have to take advantage of when we get those opportunities, man. But like I said, I'm definitely excited about it, though. Um, I don't feel like they're going to be able to protect against our front. The way that we've been rushing the passer, man, the way that we showed up against that Jets uh, offensive line, I do feel like that carries over. And ultimately, man, that is the big difference. When you're talking about Jimmy G, he struggles when he's under pressure. He struggles when he's forced to improvise, when he's having to uh, extend the play. He's not a Josh Allen. So with that being the case, man, we got to make sure that we continue to be dominant up front on our pass rush. And man, Jimmy G will definitely give us one or two. So you know I can't wait. And then after that, man, we'll be going crazy a bit because nobody circles the wagons, all right? But as a whole, man, this is definitely the big bounce back week. You know I got us getting the job done. So give me the bells. I say... Yeah, we back in fashion. We back in form. I like us 31-17 at the crib. Let's get it. Let's get it. You guys let me know your score predictions, though. Drop it in the comment section. As always, you know I appreciate you for tuning in. And until next time, baby, let's go, Buffalo. Ah.